I run Sony Pictures Digital Entertainment and I'm vice chairman of the picture company. And the reason I'm vice chairman of the picture company is um, in part because I brought Spider-Man to the studio and in part because I started Sony Entertainment Television India. And Sony Entertainment Television is actually one of Sony Pictures' largest and uh, most successful assets. And I started that in 93 when Mumbai was still called Bombay. And when cable wallahs were still just guys stringing cable through people's windows. And we started that, and I'll focus on that because it, it's an example of true kind of globalization of media. Um, we started that, we at Sony Pictures are basically the entertainment division of Sony Corp, the Japanese electronics company. And at the time, Sony actually had no formal distribution in India. At the time, the Indian market was still completely restricted, and the only way you could basically get a Sony television in India is to go to Dubai. And actually, we sold hundreds of millions of dollars worth of Sony televisions to Indian consumers in Dubai and in, and in the Emirates and in the UK. And we visited Bombay back right after um, Star started broadcasting and after ZTV launched. And we started looking at the marketplace. And what was so striking was that you had a situation where there was almost no discretionary income still. And yet you had tens of millions of cable households. And you drive down any street in any major, I mean, you could, you could drive down the street in Bombay or Calcutta or, or, or Delhi, and basically you'd see people living in Quonset huts with electricity tap-offs and cable running through their holes in, in the side of, of their house. And we saw that and we said, here is a marketplace that is starved for entertainment, that is willing to spend even, even on an income level of $5 a month, they're willing to take 10% of that income and basically spend it to have cable. And that, to us, said huge business opportunity. And so we went about looking at the way to enter the marketplace. And at the time, and still, it was illegal for uh, foreign corporations to have a controlling interest in, in network entity in India. So we set about forming a partnership, and we looked at a lot of traditional partnerships and we looked at, at some of the cable operators and we looked at some of the established major corporations and we ended up forming a partnership with a group of seven entrepreneurs that had come together that had assembled a, a library of Bollywood product that had a series of video stores um, that had produced some television and that had starred in a bunch of movies. And some of them were based in Singapore, some of them were based in, in Mumbai, some of them were based in the States. And we basically formed a 70-30 joint venture with them. We launched the service on the back of their assembled rights. There was a, there was a gentleman called Raman Maru who ran a four-store video chain in Bombay called Shimaru Video. And basically, he had acquired broadcast rights to several hundred Bollywood films, which at the time were essentially worthless because Dordeshan wouldn't air them. And so, he acquired broadcast rights with no ability to broadcast them. But for us, because television is all about volume, it's all about filling that airtime, for us it was a huge building block. And we launched the service. We set up a transmission facility in Singapore. We set up production in Mumbai, and we launched in 94. And we've now got eight channels across the cable spectrum. and. Um, it's Sony Pictures' largest television asset. And it is an indication of the power of entertainment on a global basis, but specifically about local demand and how, f how the, there are certain cultures where entertainment is really resonant, where people invest more time and more income regardless of their efforts. We tried to set up channels in mainland China Simultaneously, back in 94, we were in negotiations with the Chinese authorities. Today, there is still no Western company with local cable distribution in China. Today, there is still not a comparable to Sony Entertainment Television in mainland China because the government restricts it and because 
the culture doesn't demand it as voraciously as it did in India. Local Chinese production of film and television content is a fraction of Indian production. And consumption is a fraction. I'm not talking about just kind of Bollywood film product. I'm talking about run-of-the-mill reality television. I'm talking about Indian Idol. There is not... There is not a comparable in China to Indian Idol. There is nothing of that scale. There is nothing comparable in China to cricket in terms of its hold on the marketplace, in terms of its absolute viewership. The only thing that really compares to cricket is European football and American football. That's really the only, the the value of professional sports on TV that's close. The last Cricket World Cup auction brought in $2 billion. This was something that 10 years ago, 20 years ago, wouldn't have sold for $2 million. That's an indication of of the size of the marketplace. And what that leads to is a real growth in talent and investment across the board. And that's what's led us to beyond Sony Entertainment Television we acquired a controlling interest in a company called Frameflow in Chennai um, that we had done a bunch of the work with. There, they actually had some shots in there on both Spidey 3 and on Ghost Rider. And um, we have uh, set up uh, facilities for Sony Online Entertainment. We've actually migrated our entire customer support operation to Delhi and are actively in partnership developing MMOs in India for the Indian marketplace based on Indian myths and cultures as opposed to kind of the traditional medieval Western myths that drive EverQuest and World of Warcraft. And uh, Sony released their first uh, local Bollywood, made in Bollywood for Bollywood product a couple weeks ago. I'm going to mispronounce it. Sorry. uh, um, We got... um, we got our butts kicked on that one. Um, it's not enough singing, not enough dancing, not enough fun, frankly. Um, I think we'll make, we'll do fine, but um, we, we certainly, it is not uh, competitive in, in terms of the standards of the marketplace, and I think it's going to take us a while to be able to produce competitive Bollywood product. It took us a while to produce Hindi programming that was uh, that was viable and successful on, on SCT. But um, the interesting thing for me personally is when I led Sony's entree into India, the Japanese had a very classic perspective that the Indian economy was going to lag the Chinese economy and the Korean economy and the other Asian economies for a long period of time. And Sony as a whole did not start meaningfully investing in India until five or six years ago, until well after SET had become relevant and successful. There was a huge, there was a huge Japanese cultural bias about the Indian marketplace, and it was the consumption of the media that changed their perspective. And the funny thing is that in India, the Sony brand is driven by the television company. Everywhere else, it's driven by the televisions themselves. In the rest of the world, including the United States, we spend our time explaining to people that Sony Pictures Entertainment actually makes movies and TV shows and games, and we're actually an entertainment company, not just a black box company. In India, it's the other way around. They have to explain to them that not only they make what's on the box, they actually make the boxes. And that's, again, the power of